is a graduate of PhD in biology, major in systematics in 2018 from Central Mindanao University in Bukidnon. He is formerly working as a research assistant for seven years in the same institution um, and was appointed as the university researcher for two years in the Center for Biodiversity Research and Extension in Mindanao or CEBREM in CHED and DOST funded researches under the leadership of NAST academician Victor B. Amoroso. At present, he is an Associate Professor 5 of the Department of Biology and Biodiversity Research Unit Coordinator of the Center for Biodiversity Research and Extension in Mindanao, Central Mindanao University. He is a senior author and co-author of published books and articles in the field of taxonomy and biodiversity. He is also a project and study leader of DOST, DENR, and CHED funded research and the U.S. National Science Foundation. His research focuses on the diversity of flora and fauna in Mindanao Island. He is working on the taxonomy and morphology of Philippine ferns, specifically on tree ferns um, under Sayatheyaceae and Dixoniaceae. He is also a member of the Philippine Plant Conservation Committee, or PPCC, of the DENR BMB. Let us all welcome Dr. Fulgen P. Coritico. A uh, pleasant afternoon to everyone. Uh, this afternoon, uh, I will be sharing with you our work on the vascular flora of the selected uh, mountains in Mindanao, its diversity, conservation, and new discoveries. Actually, this is part of a big project funded by USDGAA with Dr. Victor Biamoroso as the project leader and yours truly as the co-project uh, leader. And also we have collaborators from the National Museum of the Philippines, uh, Sir Danny Tendang and Michael uh, Galindon. And also we have collaborators from the UPLB uh, Museum of Natural uh, History. As you will know, the Philippines is one of the mega diverse countries. Now, at the same time, the Philippines is considered as a biodiversity hotspot. So when we talk about the vascular plants, so the species richness, so there are uh, are a total of 10,012 species of um, vascular plants that's according to the Coast Digital Flora of the Philippines and about 50.9 or 60% of these are endemic no, in the Philippines. And in the Philippines, we have a total of 240 protected areas, but there are still many uh, areas just like some of the mountains here in Mindanao that are not yet a protected area. So that is why we are doing our work or our floristic work in some of the non-protected areas, but considered as a key biodiversity area here in the island of Mindanao. And this is the Mindanao Pambi Network. So during their uh, meeting, they emphasize uh, the need to conduct biodiversity assessment. So this Mindanao Pambi Network, this is the network of all the protected areas in Mindanao. And they emphasize the need to conduct biodiversity assessment. As you can see here in the research agenda, the number one is the resource management. So that is why there's a really need to help uh, the DNR in obtaining the, the list of the plants or animals in their respective uh, protected areas so that they have the basis in, in protecting and conserving their respective uh, protected areas. And yes, uh, these are the general threats not to our biodiversity. So our biodiversity are not spared from these different threats. So we have here conversion of the forest land into agricultural land. There is a road expansion. There is illegal mining, legal lagging, and invasive species and over exploitation or collection of the resources no, in, in, in the, the forest. So these activities are still happening no, even in the protected areas. So, so that is why there's a really need to document no, the, the, the plants, particularly in the non-PAs no, in, here in the island of uh, Mindanao. So here, this is our study sites no, for the project. So we have Mount Pantaron and Mount Tago. So these two mount, mountains uh, are located in the province of Bukidnon. So Mount uh, Tago range is here and Mount Pantaron uh, is here. 
and also our two another two sites this uh, these are Mount Apo and Mount Hamigitan so these uh, two areas are protected areas and also considered as an ASEAN heritage park and Mount Hamigitan is considered as a, a UNESCO World uh, Heritage uh, Site so this is these are the two uh, these are the four uh, uh, study sites now for this uh, project and here for the general methodology of course now we need to obtain our uh, PIC from the community from the indigenous people so in 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 Mount Apo we are working with 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 the Manobo Tagabawa and in in here in Bukidnon we are working with the Manobo Tiguahanon so we already have the the Moa between this uh, indigenous group and also with that now we 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 uh, applied for a gratitude permit uh, sa, sa DNR so nakakuha kami ng gratitude permit from the DNR and eventually we conducted a series of field work in this uh, mountain ecosystems and of course we process the specimens scientifically and then we analyze and we have the database so we have the website the Sebram e floor and fauna but we are still uh, um, finalizing this uh, website and also we conducted the BMS or the biodiversity monitoring uh, site or system and we trained our local researchers uh, to become a WEOS or a wildlife enforcement officer and then we conducted some in situ propagation for some species of plants and then we helped you know, the LGUs you know, in proclaiming uh, their area as a local conservation area as and also as an ecotourism site and also we conducted community validation and and we uh, provided a science-based policy recommendations so basically in doing floristic work so what we're doing you now we conducted a series of transect uh, walks in these different trails in these different uh, mountain uh, ecosystems and also we establish a uh, sampling plot so this is just an example so and of course, in doing a field work, no, uh, we need to yes, in doing this kind of field work, now we need to prepare. Because we will be staying ten days or uh, ten days or more than ten days, no, in, in in the field. So we need to bring all our food, lahat ng kailangan natin. So with this, no, so these are example of the the actual field work. No, sometimes yung area hindi siya accessible, so we need to walk many uh, hours. And here uh, we are sleeping in our tents for 10 nights no? or more than 10 nights. And of course, uh, we were uh, uh, guarded by our, um, our uh, bagani. Uh, these are the local armies no? in, in, in the, in the, for example, in Mount Apo. This is in Mount Apo. So, meron tayong mga bagani. So, sila yung nag assist during the, the sampling. And also, this is in San Fernando. These are the bagani of San Fernando. And uh, they're with us no? throughout the duration of the, the field work. And of course, no, what is the very uh, laborious no, part in doing floristic work is by collecting the, the specimens. So, um, ito yung pinaka uh, malaking trabaho aside from doing the identification, no, yung pinaka mahirap, but in, in doing field work collection of the specimens, so dapat we need to collect the specimens uh, properly. So that is why we are training uh, our local guides and our students know to really collect the specimens uh, properly and process the specimens. So after field work, we're doing the wet method since uh, we're staying about uh, 10 nights in, in the field. So we need to follow the, the wet method. And after this, uh, the specimens will be dried using our mechanical dryer and the specimens will be uh, sorted and mounted uh, in the in a mounting sheet and stored in our uh, University uh, uh, Herbarium. So we have CMUH, the Central Mindanao University Herbarium. And of course, the sets of the specimens and, uh, will be given to the national, uh, the Philippine National uh, Herbarium, especially for, for the holotypes. No? For our new species, we did deposited our holotypes to the Philippine National uh, Herbarium. So here, this is the initial result no, of our um, uh, work. Here in these four sites no, in, in, in Mindanao, so as you can see here, when it comes to the total number of the vascular plants no, in the selected mountains in Mindanao, so we have here Mount Ahamigitan obtained the highest number of species, followed by Mount Pantaron, Mount Apo, and the least is in Mount uh, 
Tagor range. And we collected a total of 2,399 species of vascular plants, and that's about 24% of the 10,000 species of vascular plants that can be found in the, the Philippines. And here, for the ferns and the lycophytes, so we have Mount Pantaron no? as the highest number of species, followed by Mount Apo, the next Mount Hamigita, and the least is in uh, Mount Tago. And for the seed plants, the highest number of species was uh, observed in Mount Hamigita, no? followed by Mount Pantaron, Mount Apo, and the list is in uh, Mount uh, Tago. And here, we try to, to uh, uh, list down no? uh, the, the, the families with the most number of, of species for the ferns and lycophytes. So we have the family Polypoidaceae, Glycinaceae, Thilipteridaceae, Tridaceae, and Dryopteridaceae obtain uh, the highest, no? Uh, the families with the most number of, of species. And of course, this is expected. It's because the families Polypodiaceae, Glycinaceae, Tridaceae, Tridaceae, they are uh, large families uh, of, of ferns. And for the lycophytes, we have the family uh, Silagenelaceae. And for the seed plants, we have here the family Orchidaceae and Rubiaceae. And of course, these are large uh, families. And then we have Myrtaceae, Moraceae, Apocinaceae, Raceae and Zingiberaceae. Uh, so these are the families of, of, of vascular plants with the uh, most number of uh, species now documented in the different uh, mountain ecosystems here in Mindanao. And we tried to compare you know, through, through uh, cluster analysis the species composition between sites for the ferns. As you can see here, the, the Mount Tago and Mount Apo, uh, they have the highest uh, similarity. And here, Mount Hamigitan has a unique no, uh, species, considering that Mount Hamigitan has a very unique uh, vegetation types. And also for the uh, cluster analysis for between sites for the, um, uh, the, the seed plants, so the similarity is uh, quite low. But here, Mount Pantaron and Mount Hamigitan uh, have this uh, close uh, or have the highest uh, percentage of similarity and considering that these two mountain ecosystems, the Mount Hamigitan and Mount Pantaron, they have this very unique vegetation types now, which is the ultramafic, the force over ultramafic. No? So uh, uh, Mount Hamigitan, uh, in Mount Hamigitan, there are many uh, unique species that uh, can be found no, in the ultramafic uh, forest of Mount Hamigitan and also in Mount Pantaron, no? just, just like the feature plants. So of all the sites, uh, Mount Pantaron has a total of, we documented a total of eight species of feature plants, while in Mount Hamigitan, we recorded seven species of uh, feature plants. And of course, now I will be sharing uh, some of the unique uh, plants no, uh, in this uh, mountain ecosystem. So since I work on the tree ferns, so the, the family say the Yaceae or the scaly tree ferns, so this uh, these uh, plants are very unique since uh, they have this very unique uh, morphology and many or all, all of these species under the CFTSA are listed no, in the CITES. And in these four mountain ecosystems, we documented 16 species out of 20 species that can be found in the island of Mindanao, so which is uh, quite uh, high. And of course, no, this is the, the common species of, of tree fern. So this is is uh, Glauca, or use, it used to be uh, Setea pontamina. So this is the commonly uh, harvested species of uh, of tree fern, and and compare it with the other tree fern species. This is the fast uh, growing tree ferns of all the tree ferns now here in in Mindanao. So they have the presence of scales. That is why the family is called as a scale tree fern family. And another tree fern family, the Dixoniaceae. So we have a total of four species in the Philippines, and three of them can be found in these uh, mountain ecosystems. So we have uh, Dixonia mollis and Dixonia amorsuana, and then Caloclina uh, javanica. So this is a hairy tree ferns. Uh, late, uh, kanina, yung, yung pinakita ko, those are scaly tree ferns because they have the scales no, as the dominant feature. But for this, here's naman yung sa kanila, so that the family uh, Dixoniaceae. And here, this is another interesting uh, group, the, the Asian feature plants, the Nipintaceae. 
So we recorded a total of 20 species of feature plants in these uh, four uh, selected mountains in, in Mindanao. And these are some of the species that are site endemic no? in, in Mount Hamigitan and in uh, Mount uh, Pantaron. So here, Nepeti Sicilia, Pulcra, these are species that can be found in Mount Pantaron. The Hamigitanensis macramphora, these are species uh, site endemic in, in Mount Hamigitan. And we have Pantaronensis, Cornota, Talandic, and Malimuensis. These are endemic species in uh, Mount Pantaron. And for the Medinilia, uh, for Medinilia from the family Melistomataceae, we recorded a total of 32 uh, species uh, of, of Medinilias uh, in, in, in this four protected area, in, in this uh, four selected uh, mountains uh, in Mindanao. And one of the unique uh, findings of this, uh, of this uh, project is that we uh, recorded now a new record of um, carnivorous plant. So this is Drosera rotundifolia, which uh, uh, it can be found only now in, in Mount Tago, at the peak of Mount Tago. So this is Drosera rotundifolia. This is another species of carnivorous uh, plant. So originally, this species can be found only in the, the northern hemisphere, but this is the first record of this species in the the island of the Philippines, particularly in Mount Tago in the island of Mindanao. So we published this one in uh, Blumea. And also we have another interesting species, a new record of a tree fern in, in, in the Philippines. So this Alsophila commutata, uh, it used originally, this species can be found only in the Malay Peninsula in, in Borneo. And we documented the species in the island of uh, Mindanao, particularly in Mount Tago and in Mount Pantaron. Also, we published this one no, in, in, in Blumea. And also, uh, one of the interesting findings of this project of, is that uh, the Linsaya amigitanensis, it used to be a site endemic species in Mount Amigitan, but we recorded this one in Mount Talgo and in Mount uh, Pantaron. And one of the uh, interesting uh, findings that we have uh, encountered no, in doing fieldwork in the island of Mindanao is that we rediscovered this um, critically endangered species of plant. Now, this is a lycophyte. This is Isuetis philippinensis. So here, and this Isuetis philippinensis is very unique because this species is amphibious, meaning it is a submersion in the water, and it has a very unique morphological characteristics because this is this plant is heterosporous, so which produce both the megaspores and the microspores. So we publish this uh, work in the Philippine Journal of Science, and of course we emphasize you know, the need to really conserve this species because, as you can see here, the the habitat of the species is uh, near the, the community. So there's a really need to, uh, to uh, educate the, the people, the people uh, living near this uh, uh, area. And also for the endemism and conservation status of the, uh, the plants in the four uh, selected mountains. So we have here, Mount Amigitan obtaining the highest number of threatened and endemic species, also followed by uh, here uh, Mount Apo, and then next is Mount Pantaron, and the list is in Mount uh, Tago. And here, these are some of the Mindanao endemic species of pitcher plants. We have ferns and orchids here, and also we have um, some species of Philippine endemic ferns, pitcher plants, and orchids. So these are some of the critically endangered species, the Paphiopidilum, the lady sleeper, we have the pitcher plants, and also we have endangered species just like the tree ferns and other species of uh, orchids. And one of, what are the different initiatives that we have uh, conducted now in, in protecting this uh, very rich uh, biodiversity in these uh, mountains? So in with this project, now we help the LGU and the community in uh, doing the mapping and delineation of this uh, proposed uh, local conservation area. So in Mount Malimomo, so we help you know, the, the, the community and, and the LGU you know, in mapping the LCA or the local conservation uh, area. Of course, 
with the help of our partners. We have the Philippine Eagle and also we have the LG of San Fernando. And so that is why we obtained this local conservation uh, area or declaring the, the area as a local conservation area. And this is uh, approved by the in, in barangay level. And then now we are working on the, the municipal uh, uh, ordinance no, proclaiming the Mount uh, Malimumo as a local conservation area because this area is home to many site endemic species of picture plants. Now we have the Nepenthes malimumoensis, Nepenthes cabane, we have the Ophioderma subsessile, of which the species uh, are found only you know, in this uh, mountain range. And so in, in our university, we have the spore bank, the fern spore bank, and this is the first of its kind in the Philippines. And this project was funded by the USTP card. And we, this fern spore bank uh, is a very promising easy to conservation tool because we can store large quantities and with a very uh, a low economic and technical cost. So as of now, we have a total of 300 species of ferns spores deposited in our fern spore bank. And also, we mass propagated the critically endangered or the threatened and endemic species of, uh, of ferns using the modified media that we have uh, developed. And this modified media, we already have the uh, approved uh, utility model you know, for this uh, modified uh, media. And also, we are accepting students you know, to have their OJT in our laboratory. So these are our BS Biology, Plant Biology major. So they have conducted their training and also their thesis in our uh, laboratory. And also in our university, we have this university fernery. And we have now a total of more than 200 species of ferns that can be found in our university fernery. And these ferns are from uh, different uh, mountain ecosystems in Mindanao. So we have now a total of 200, more than 200 species of ferns. And also we already published a book on the, the ferns that, that can be found in our university uh, fernery. And also we have conducted training workshop, particularly on the fern propagation using the, the protocol and the modified media that uh, we have developed. So we went to different uh, uh, um, indigenous uh, groups here in, in Mindanao, so in, in San Fernando, the Manubo Tiguahanon, and also we went to uh, Marilo, so to conduct training workshop on the propagation of these uh, critically endangered or the endemic and economic species of ferns. And also this project uh, was able to conduct no, ecotourism initiatives. So showcasing the biodiversity. Now let's say for example for Mount Malimomo. So we are showcasing the importance or the unique species of peach plants no, in their uh, area to encourage uh, uh, visitors not to visit the, the site and also we established nursery nursery on site so this is in uh, Natampod in Mount Pantaron so we have conducted training and then we we established a, a fernery as a, a source no, of, of livelihood for these uh, local people and also this project we uh, we uh, distributed these different SEPA materials in the stakeholders no, of, of uh, these uh, mountain uh, ecosystems. And also for this project, we were able to describe new species of plants. So for example, we have the Sonia Morsuana of the family Dixoniaceae. So in the Philippines, we only have, we used to have only one species of Dixonia, and this is the uh, second species of Dixonia in the Philippines. And of course, no, for uh, the Mount Pantaron, this is a site endemic species of, of fern in Mount Pantaron. This is Ophioderma subsessile. So this species can be found only in uh, Mount Pantaron, particularly in uh, Mount uh, Malimumo. And also we have here grass ferns as uh, new species, particularly in, in Mount Hamigitan. So these two grass ferns, uh, grass fern species, the Actinostachys minuta and Actinostachys simplex, are found in only in Mount Hamigitan. And this minuta, uh, the Actinostachys minuta, is very unique because this species grows only on the trunk of tree ferns. And here, 
this Akinustaki simplex is also unique by having this very simple uh, front. And also for the flowering plants, we discovered these new species of vaccinium, the new species of orchid, the new species of Discidia, and the new species of Hyperi uh, Hypericum, no? Periongi, named after the late uh, Dr. Perry Ong. And these four species of flowering plants are found only in Mount Hamigitan. So there are still many species not to be discovered. Although we already conducted a series of field work in, in, in Mount Hamigitan, but still we are discovering a new species of uh, plants. And okay, uh, I would like to end my presentation by uh, acknowledging the Department of Science and Technology for the, the uh, funds and also our local partners our collaborators, the National Museum of the Philippines, the UPLB, the LG of San Fernando, Bukidnon, and the Davao State University, the DNR, the Philippine Eagle Foundation, and of course, our SEBREM and our very own Central Mindanao University. Thank you very much for listening.